Hello everyone and welcome to the new video of my Git series, in which we will learn how to work with remote repositories. Namely, we will see how to add remotes, how to download changes from remote repos, and how to push our changes to remote repositories. So without further ado, let's get straight to it. When you start collaborating on any Git project, you will need to know how to manage remotes that is, versions of a project that are hosted on the internet or somewhere else. So remember when we ran git clone command in the previous videos? Besides downloading the project repo locally onto our disk, git created a reference to this remote repository, which we can check using git remote command. As you can see, we have only one remote configured. Implicitly, git gave it a name origin. It basically stores a URL that is used for reading and writing to that remote, and we can see that URL by providing dash v option. So I'm going to append dash v option here. So we have the same references for fetching and pushing data. We can even get more information about specific remote using the following command: git remote show, and we provide the name of our remote. In our case, it's origin. So it will tell us what our head branch is, what remote branches are tracked, what merges will happen if we run git pull, and similarly, what will happen if we run git push. Obviously, we can rename our remote using git remote rename command. So let's do that right now. I'm going to say git remote rename, and we provide the old name, the origin in our case, and I'm going to change it to kt, standing for Contact. There is a way as well for explicitly adding a remote. So to do that, um, I will copy uh, one of my remotes, which is stored on Bitbucket. So I'm going to navigate there and I'm going to clone it here using SSH. I'm interested in this part. So we are going to explicitly add this remote to our local git. I'm going to say git remote add and we provide the name for our remote. In my case I'm going to name it bb standing for bitbucket and we're going to provide the link. Oh, it looks like it wasn't copied so there we go. Let me, let me go back there and I'm going to repeat this. I'm going to click on here back to terminal, let's clear this, git remote add and we're gonna name it bb, I'm gonna paste the link, but obviously we don't want this part with git clone here. Okay, so let's clear this and when we run git remote again, you can see that I have two remotes right now. So why should we care about remotes at all? Say that you have your project repo stored in several places. That can be, for example, GitHub, Bitbucket, or GitLab. So when you make changes, you want, you, you want to update your remote simultaneously to save time, etc. In other words, you are maintaining copies of the same repository in several places. Let's now see how to configure this. So our goal is to have one remote that will point to two remote repositories. So next time when we push our changes, it will be sent to both of them. All right, so first of all, I'm going to rename our origin uh, to all, but right now it is called, let me see, it is called KT. So I'm gonna rename it, this remote rename KT to all. So this all remote will later point to two remote repositories, uh, the GitHub one and the Bitbucket one. All right, so we have this remote. When we run now git remote show all, you will see that we have one URL here for pushing. Our goal is to have two. We need to add the Bitbucket one. Okay, so let's, first of all, we need to re-register this one because if we added directly the Bitbucket one, this would be removed. 
So the command uh, used to add another URL is the following. git remote set URL and we want to add a URL and now we need to indicate to which remote we want to add. So we want to add to all and we need to indicate as well the action to which we want to add it. So we need to indicate this push action. There we go, dash dash push. And now we need to provide the URL again. So I'm gonna copy this and paste it in here. There we go. Okay, so we need to do the same thing right now, but with Bitbucket. Okay, so let me go back here. I'm gonna copy this one more time and I'm gonna remove the GitHub URL and we're gonna paste in the Bitbucket one. There we go. But again, we need to remove this git clone command. There we go. So let's clear the screen, the terminal, and let's run git remote show all again. You can see now that we have two URLs for pushing. So whenever we push changes later on, it will be sent to both of these remotes simultaneously. All right, so let's test this out actually. And by the way, doing this, we will learn how to push changes to remotes. So I'm gonna check what files I have in my repo. I'm gonna add another file and I'm gonna call it remotes that txt let's put some text in here let's say learning about remotes repos let's save it as you remember we are gonna add it to the staging area we're gonna commit this change as well to our local database and later on we will send this to the remote okay so um let's call it added remotes.txt file Simple as that, okay. So now, uh, to push our changes, we can simply use the push command. Let's see how that works. So first of all, it should be sent to the GitHub repo, and secondly, it should be sent to Bitbucket one. And that's exactly what happened. So uh, let's go to these repos in my browser and as you can see here the file was not here previously so I'm gonna refresh the page and now we have this remotes.txt file in here so let's check our bitbucket repo as well and there we go you can see that we have this remotes.txt here uh, as well now let's go back to terminal and let's see how to get data from remote projects. So say that you cloned a certain repository some time ago, but in the meantime, other people pushed their changes to the central repo. So in fact, your local repo is not up to date. So I'm gonna simulate this. Uh, I'm gonna create a file here. So say that I'm the someone who's actually, who's added a file in the meantime. So we're going to say create new file and I'm going to call it mysterious.txt. Let's put some text in here. This will be committed to the master branch. Don't worry about branches for the time being. We'll tackle them in the next videos. So let's commit this new file. So in fact, we have this file here in our remote repository. But when we check it in our console, we don't have it here. So there are two ways to get data from remotes. The first one is for fetching, for downloading the data but not merging them into our local changes. And this is called git fetch. And this command is called git fetch. So let's actually run this command. But as I said, it will download the data, but it will not merge them into our local changes. So when we run ls again, you can see that we don't have this file here, but when we run git status, it says that our branch is behind master, remote master by one commit. 
Okay, so to get the data from remote repository and merge this into our local changes, we would use git pull command. So let's take a look at that. There we go. So it was pulled and it was merged into our local changes. By the way, we get this warning from git, I believe, 2.27. Uh, we will talk about this in the next video. We will see how to merge out changes and different strategies for that. But for the time being, don't worry about that. Let's now run ls again and you can see that we have our mysterious.txt file in our repo. But um, again, when we refresh this here, it's in our GitHub repo, but it's not in our bit packet. There is no active sync between these two, these two repos. So to push this data to bit packet one, we can again run git push command and it will automatically push this to the second bit packet repo as well. So there we go. You can see that it was sent to bit packet. So when I refresh this here, the file will be there. Perfect. That worked very well. All right, so that would be it for this video. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section. Thanks for watching, stay safe, and have a great day. Bye-bye.